See, I'm the one who they labeled as controversial, and Cardi B is the role model for 12-year-old girls. There's rappers pushing Xanax at the top of the billboard, but if I mention race in a song, I'm scared I'll get killed for it. It's backwards. It's getting exponentially dumb. It's more difficult to get a job than purchase a gun. Eminem used to gay bash and murder his mom, and now he doesn't want fans if they voted for Trump. We're ashamed to be American. You should probably love it, because you have the right to hate it and not get stoned to death in public. As children, we were taught how to walk and talk, but the system wants adults to sit down and shut up cancel culture runs the world now the planet went crazy label everything we say is homophobic or racist if you're white then you're privileged guilty by association all our childhood heroes got me welcome to the whiskey rebellion coming from a leave of absence and from a long nap in my car is richard I didn't even see you in there i was like is richard here did he fall asleep in the bathroom where's richard i made it though well i'm glad you're that, here. that the ding of the Facebook Messenger somehow gets through it, all the haze. Ding! And I'm here. Wake up call. It's, your, it's a great wake up call. <laughs> ding! You're late for class. What's, what's up with you, Jason? Wow, it's just been a wild two weeks. I missed you. I missed you guys. We were, uh, we were gone for Memorial Day, and then we yeah. were gone because somebody had something going on with their internals. Yeah, that's no secret. I can tell my audience. Yeah, she doesn't care. I I suffer from kidney stones, Ugh. and they were at its worst two Mondays ago. I guess right. That's what. It oh was. my lord! I had to leave work in the middle of the day, and I'm like, God, just take me, kind of mode. You know, <laughs> like literally. I mean, that's like that's how painful they are. And then, like over the last two weeks, here and there, like just feel like maybe it's gonna move, and then it doesn't. So it's a tease. Mm. Oh, that sucks. You know, I can tell it's affecting you because we went right into the show without even introducing who we were, what the show is. No, let them get to, let them get to know our vital organs and problems with them uh, first. I always like to know the internals. Yeah, I guess, yes. I want to, to know me inside. And out. And out, yes. But more in. <laughs> <laughs> Just to start. I'm Richard Myers of the Myers Firm PA. I am an attorney. My practice is largely devoted to complicated and high-conflict divorces, um, and I still have not abandoned, although I do it less, uh, employment discrimination law. I don't want to be thought of as no longer doing it, but it's kind of the minor focus now, majoring in family and minoring in employment law. Uh, but you can find me at uh, www.myersfirm.com. My phone number is 813-985-6550. Uh, leave a message there because that's uh, a, now my office that I rarely go to where that phone rings. Um, but if you go on the on the uh, website, you'll see my cell number. I don't want to give it out on the air. But if you go on the website, you'll see it there. It's on one of the pages, and you can contact me there as well. Oh. Make it like a extra secret secret probation. Yeah, it's a to get secret to website phone you number. Go to the secret <laughs> website. Get the, it's like you got to give the password. The password. It just feels weird phone. to give it out over the radio. I don't know why. It's probably mm. I'm probably got less yeah. people looking at this show than my website. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's really sad, isn't it? That, is, that makes me want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I should be happy. What are you no doing, Jace? Hi, ah, I'm Jason Ricardo <laughs> with the law firm of Ricardo and Waslick, where we help uh, protect people's credit from uh, junk debt buyers, debt collectors, and foreclosure. Um, we uh, we like to help you get your credit in line when you've gotten a little bit behind, because there's always a way to um, get ahead when uh, when uh, when it looks bleak, even if you have kidney stones. That's bleak. Bleak. Really bleak. Uh, so Ricardo and Waslick. So I should just come to your office to feel You should better. come. Well, I'll just punch you really hard and he'll pass it. <laughs> Ricardo and Waslick, 352-567-3173. My email is jason at ricardolaw.com, or you can go to our website and watch our videos at ricardolaw.com. All right, so what are our regular segments now? Are we still going to try to find a guilty or not guilty? And well, we are. I mean, What was it, lies, we, lies? We have all kinds of things thing? that we've kind of dropped the ball on this week. Yeah. I just remember guilty or not guilty. What was the other one? The other one was facts, facts. facts. Oh, facts, facts. Facts. <laughs> facts, 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 and facts. That's like three A's. Three, three to sixteen A's. It depends on who's saying it. Yep. Facts, facts. Depends on how true it is. Facts. <laughs> 
how true it is. But we're all. not prepared. We I, of course not. We were been too busy. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's been, it's been All right, busy. here we go. Here's a, here's a fact, facts, or not fact. Okay. Floyd Mer- uh, Mayweather is a uh, carnival barker. Carnival? What's a carnival? <laughs> what's a carnival? Fact. That guy is. That guy's just. He had that. a quote for after this fight, which was so yeah. classic. Something about something about a heist. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, um, it was legal I'm the robbery. Best at legal bank robbery. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, because he made like a hundred million, million dollars. Oh, yeah. I th- I read thirty, but uh, oh, no, the, take... the purse was a hundred million. Yeah, right? yeah, the purse. Okay, was so he t- he said his bank account was thirty million bigger. <laughs> yes. He's like well, so. What? <laughs> so uh, tell me who these guys are. These 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 YouTubers. I have no They're idea not- who they are. I I had no idea. They're just YouTubers. There's they're brothers. Jenkins. They happen to be from I think Cleveland, which is okay. interesting. And I guess they're really popular, they and people boxing. don't like them so much that they'll pay fifty but bucks to watch do? them they, get beat up. Do they do stuff like 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 dares? I mean, what do they do? Oh, that's- I have no idea. Like, I've never done any so, research. Like, how did it end up being a boxing match? Uh, they are. They have like super, super followings on on YouTube, and I think the whole point was to try to bring the younger. Uh, well, I, I get all that. I just and, want to know what they oh. did to become so popular. Uh, you know what? YouTube is a, is is a mystery to me. I don't understand what people are watching. My kids will be like, "Hey, Dad, look at this! This is hilarious!" And you'll right. watch, and you're like, "I don't get it." And they're like, oh, <laughs> "It's so funny!" <laughs> like, I don't know. She just ordered a. Yeah. She just ordered something. I don't know. It's so stupid. I don't know. I don't. I don't get. Uh, I don't and, get today. Gigi watches TikTok all the time, and I. I, oh, I got to admit that Can't. I look over my shoulder, and some of it's cracking me up. Yeah, it's really. But I'm not gonna download it. No, you have to. It's amazing. No, because you have. You have. No, what I love about TikTok is that's how China's taking absolutely over. no idea China. China. if <laughs> what is happening is true or not. China is taking over America. Fact, facts, or not facts. <laughs> facts. <laughs> that's facts. facts. <laughs> no, I like TikTok. So, so, be, so among the three of us, we don't have an idea how they got so popular. That no, they can, I mean, I they can, can look fight it up. for I'm sure it's thirty I, million dollars. I YouTube think, videos. I think they do like uh, ch- challenge type stuff where they go. Ch- I don't. know. No, what's I'm that show it. where they had those idiots do almost anything? Um, Jackass. Jackass. Yeah. No, it's I probably not like, like that. I didn't know it was like that. And I didn't. I don't know. I know he's done some I love stupid how I things. Describe it. Those idiots will do anything. Oh, jackass! Yeah, those. <laughs> Let's now, who was the guy that uh, that did that? He became an. He was an actor too. What do you mean? The guy that was the lead guy in Jackass. Oh, I What's think he was in Jackass before he became an actor. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He became. Yeah. He ended up doing a little bit more mainstreamy things this time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and he ended up marrying uh, one of those. Girls, I can't remember. <laughs> we're yeah, so doing real good. We are, we are the king. <laughs> of, we are the king of the of the accurate references. <laughs> Something like that. She's the one guy, of those girls. That guy with oh, the well, hair. The that the that kind of show. Show. How did they become famous? They, they did shit. They I don't did know stuff what they did. on YouTube. That guy with the hair who didn't mind falling on his balls. Okay, married so the woman with the boobs. Basically, who, I don't know any of these people. They did YouTube videos, and then also they have their own podcast. So. Yeah, well, I'm not fighting for thirty million dollars. <laughs> I would. What am I, I doing wrong? I take I take a punch for that. I'll take a punch for it. thirty oh, million. By the way, so did you see any of it? Did you watch the clips? Did you? No, I, didn't. I don't. I don't need to. I've seen this dance before. Yeah. So th- th- there were no refs, no scoring. No one ref. The one it was the one referee. Yes. Yeah. No, no. It's there like was no scoring match. is what I meant. Oh, yeah. There was yeah, no there scoring. Was no there judges. was no scoring. No it was an exhibition. Say. It was an exhibition. You do, this, the intent, I think, was uh, – this is what I read. Uh, well, based on what I read, this is my conclusion. This was in, totally intended to go the, the length right. for, for, for eyeballs, and, and I'll tell you what my theory is in the end. So they said, that, he, they said that Floyd could have put him away – Somewhere around the fourth or the fifth round, and that he kept playing with them, and he they kept all the way through to the eight. So, and then, do you do 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 you were you around or did you watch when the the McGregor Mayweather? I remember it. I didn't see it. And that was huge. And I went to a sports bar to watch. It was packed. And um, he tossed him. He tossed him. No, that was the most boring fight of all time. Really, right? Yep. Might have they each might have landed a blow or two per round. 
they were just going the distance to for eyeballs to get paid. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's so I can't imagine this could have been any better. Here's what I think. I think uh, Mayweather is is either about to cash out, or he's going to bring these kids on under his label, his name. I don't know. Like he has a, an entertainment company, right. and he might be looking to expand his entertainment company. That, that's what I think. Because yeah, this was all engineered. This was all engineered. He's basically for, saying there's a hundred million suckers born every minute. It's basically, basically. Right, right. right. Like I said, he's like he's like PT Barnum. Right. Well, I mean, honestly, I really didn't think about it until I watched the video after, and what uh, Jake Paul said was brilliant. He said Dana White from UFC is literally making millions and millions and millions of dollars off of these guys and paying the fighters who are actually in there putting their lives on the line, like $7 million. But he's pulling in all the money. He's like, I'm showing you guys that one of you guys can fight me and make $20 million. You mm-hmm. will always find a, You will always find a, a big man, little man uh, analogy for, for anything. That's what he said. That was what he said. I mean, he's that. essentially trying to yeah. take out the— well, Maybe we've been wrong. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's the sage. I am. <laughs> you're hurting me right now <laughs> do you enjoy that no i i think there is people who make money off of other people that is the that is the system i think the problem is that when the little people realize that they can make the big money then they become the big yep and yeah. then they're and then it's like no one ever smears it around when they have a chance no to nobody nobody's money. ever gonna no one's ever gonna spread the wealth no one spreads the wealth but that's um, what makes our country great. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all greedy. we're all trying to we're become the schmuck. Greedy. Yeah, we all just want to be the douchebags. <laughs> right, right. Let's do it. <laughs> no, you want to be the, you want to be the schmuck at the beginning that that figures out the that figures out the formula, and then you want to become the tycoon that looks well, for the other well, schmucks. I thought we were equating tycoons with schmucks. Oh, I, I want to be that guy. I want to be the schmuck that ends up with all the money. Yes, and okay. then then lo- is looked upon by the, the king guy schmuck that, amongst the rest right, of the, the king schmuck. schmuck of the schmucks. <laughs> My goodness, we're... shows right off the rails. Facts. We're Fifteen minutes in, and we're right off the rails. <laughs> Gone. Someone has to do Under- a research shows. on the guilty or not guilty. Well, you watch uh, videos all the time. Guilty or not guilty? I, well, I couldn't really. I mean. I didn't see anything. I, I mean, we got to be more prepared. We got to. Uh, well, yeah. we usually meet ahead of time. For yeah, we didn't. We didn't meet. Um, Plus, you, you just keep, came you back keep, from Atlanta. You keep getting. You keep getting kidney stones. I keep getting called out of town. Yeah. So we got this. We got this. We're such old men. We got this strange email from uh, my 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 mother in law lives uh, in Alabama, and she lives on the top of a mountain, and she's getting a little older, and her husband's getting older, and they're not really. They are self-sufficient on their own, but they live kind of out of the way, and nobody, no, no, there's no, there's no direct family there. They, they have cousins and nephews and nieces up there, but nobody of direct, like, there's no, my grandmother, my my grandmother, my mother-in-law doesn't have any children there or any grandchildren there. So when things go upside down and they need to get to a hospital or they need care and they don't. Then um, it, they're becoming a burden on the other family. Well, the other family, one of the spokesmen from the other family, um, sent us a very cryptic email like, "Come and get them." <laughs> very, it was very a very cryptic. nicely worded. Um, we're done. Come and get them. And we're like, "Excuse me, what? We don't so even you know you. We've never even her, you had to put her in a home. Or something? We've never even spoken to this person. So anyway, we, Jill and I." took the opportunity to go let's just go up and make an assessment have a conversation um not to air any dark, dirty laundry or anything like that so essentially what we're going to do is lo- we have a we have a short term goal of relocating them down here mm-hmm. we can no we didn't go pick them up and put them in the back of a car and drive them down you we didn't go up there cord. we didn't say <laughs> like national lampoon <laughs> okay here are the cups <laughs> this trapper here's the, the roof here's, like yeah, the <laughs> put her, put her. nice that would be very nice no, it, it, so anyway, but we felt it was – it wasn't like an emergency that we go up there, but we looked at our calendar and like for the next several weekends, it's like nuts. So this had to be it. It, it was like just go up. We, we shot up there Saturday morning. Our goal was to get back so you today. you the oldest in charge of the youngest. 
Yeah, so okay. yeah, like I said, I have a, I have built-in babysitters. Right, okay. So my oldest, 19, 17, Do they get favors 13. Or what do they I, get? I pay for their tuition. I pay for their insurance. I pay their gas. So this is their obligation. I pay their food. They, they don't have anything That's, extra incentive? Yeah, I mean, they get extra incentives. So I give them a hug and a kiss every once in a while. Give them a little wink. I love you. Wait till they quit on you. Then when they quit, they're dead. <laughs> they're dead to me. Dead to me. You're that no. you're that king schmuck we, on the hill of the family. Right? Yeah, that's why we well, we can't talk about those people. That's me. <laughs> the plebes have to have to babysit. But I but Jill and I we took the baby with us. So okay, there was a there was a fifty fifty shot that Rocco was going to be here with me this <laughs> this evening. Right, right, right. <laughs> that would have been like, entertaining. We yeah, had, as we long had as a baby not... or two in the yeah. studio. It's it's been it's been done. Yeah. All right. So, and so uh, what was the assessment? So the assessment was that they are okay for now, but long-term prospects aren't good for them staying on top of a mountain, which is literally inaccessible by ambulance, and that um, we should relocate them. And they were actually they were actually very open, and they were like, you know, it's not our favorite choice, but – it's probably a logical choice. So and the it was weather's actually, nice. It was actually oh, they weren't like you're not taking nope, me from this. No, nope, we had it was really very unless you strap me to the roof. It was very loving and protective and uh, cooperative, and we were really pleased God, with. They uh, have you snowed so good. Yeah, they're not coming. <laughs> 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 they'll never come. They're, they they're up they there. So they're reasonable. up there. They're up there building. You leave. Yeah. And they're like they're building. They're building the barricade. Yeah. <laughs> we just needed a visitor. <laughs> they're like preppers on top of a mountain. Right. They'll never come out. They're not coming. No, they're and they you can't got a make us. System to Israel. <laughs> they'll be like Les Mis. They'll be waving a flag. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> what the fuck? That was Les Mis. You don't know Les Mis? No, I haven't seen it. I know what it is. I just haven't seen it. And that's the, that's what it is. I just gave you the whole story in I a nutshell. I guess I'm uncultured after all. I am Pretty very much. cultured. <laughs> just, what, well, cheese is cultured, so I guess I'm very cultured like a cheese. All right. So so when you say they kind of like pass the short term, don't get immediately in the car, What's what is the mid-range plan then? By when? Well, first of all, we're going to have to have American pickers go up there and go through all their stuff. Oh, I'd love to go. <laughs> <laughs> they got. Uh, do you ever see that show? A lot of yes. stuff. They got a lot I of stuff. I get. You ever, I get, you ever I see that show? You're like channels. I never yeah. watch the one episode from beginning to end, but I'll I'll stay fixated for a commercial break, and then it goes a commercial, and I'll forget that it's on. <laughs> 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 But during like the ten minutes I'm watching it, mean, that stuff's fascinating to me. Well, like, uh, the, there's a lot of stuff. Have you ever watched it? And you're like, you're like, oh my god, where? Because they have to, they have to go through a lot of crap to find the the. Well, that would definitely be. The, I mean, it's a two story. It's a it's a cabin on stilts, on top of a mountain in Alabama. The cabin on the interior is very well maintained, and it's mm-hmm. really pretty. A really pretty cabin, and. Very well adorned with collectibles, knickknacks, mm-hmm. pictures. How, you how know. old are these folks? They're in their 70s. Okay. Yeah. And so they've been collecting for a long time. But the underneath, it's like where all the <laughs> – I guess it's, it's where like the clowns it's, live. It's like, it's like either pack rat heaven or pack rat hell, depending on depending, which yeah. kind of pack rat you are. <laughs> if you're the pack rat or, it's it's heaven. If you're the pack rat E, it's hell. Okay. So how did you feel? I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> I'm like, I can bring a blowtorch. So what if part of the <laughs> challenge is, listen, Jason, thank you for helping us and moving out of Florida. Can you make sure this stuff comes with us? All of it. Yeah, I'll put it all in this really awesome trailer. We'll see what happens. <laughs> oops! <laughs> it'll, oops! It, it, it all burned up <laughs> on the side of the road. <laughs> we had a little accident. <laughs> Oh my God. And the famous words of Animal House. <laughs> Face it, you fucked up. You trusted us. Oh, I was thinking more like the Godfather. Leave the gun. Keep the cannolis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, I went through this a little bit with my mom and trying to convince her to, to either go to Tampa or to Atlanta. Yeah, at the, yeah I'm sure you did. Yeah. yeah. And my mom had a lot of stuff built up. Not pack ratty, but mm-hmm. just had a lot of stuff. 
right? Uh, you, stuff you accumulate over the years. So we got to a point where the realtor said, I know somebody that can pack this shit up and sell a lot of it and do the estate kind of sale and just give you a percentage. You won't have to worry about it, blah, blah, blah. All right, so the lady did it, and we were happy for it. My mom was kind of not informed very well about because ah. it wasn't going to happen if she, we did inform yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no. Yeah, sure. And then at the end of the deal, the uh, we tipped the uh, realtor like a hundred bucks to, for doing that. Okay. I mean, we had to pay the the company that did it. Plus, we like thank you for helping out and cleaning the home because after all the stuff was out, she she went in personally and helped the crew clean. You know, like wipe down where all the dust marks were. Sure, know, sure, you know? sure. So she did all that, and then my mom. <laughs> Who really didn't want to leave the house ever I, at I remember, all. I, I, okay. I vaguely remember, but yes. I remember she wrote me this nasty letter. I have it somewhere. This really <laughs> nasty letter. Like, really, like, I, I, it's, it's so nasty, the it's letter. Like, it's like classic. It was it's so, so nasty, nasty you had to keep it. Yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> and share it with a family. Oh, yeah. They yeah, all read it. Any good. Okay. But she, of all the things that she was complaining about, the thing that irked her the most was that I tipped, I tipped the realtor for help cleaning the house. <laughs> She's like, I didn't want that stuff to go, and you didn't have any authority, right? So, and then you gave her extra money to give it away. A <laughs> hundred bucks, <laughs> right, right, wow. like a hundred bucks. Mom, you netted one hundred ninety thousand dollars from the sale. <laughs> you can miss, you can miss a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, that's a nice come up. Hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Yeah, well, well you know, it was actually amazing. actually she probably had no very she probably had full. because well that's a whole other long story yeah. about my mom but um and I guess another reason why she at the end had some vitriol t- towards me which was uncalled for but I remember the feelings that she had at the beginning when I was going through my horrific divorce and my mom was sitting on a large estate because my dad willed her a lot of money and. She asked me, goes, what do you need to make sure you don't have, like, debt coming out of this divorce? And I said, I need – I went – I was already $60,000 in debt just in legal fees. Yeah, sure. Right? So she wrote me a check for sixty grand. Oh, my And God. I told my siblings, I said, I'll consider this in advance on an inheritance because it's – we never anticipated that mom would then live – Many years past that, many many years past right, that, right, 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 and then, and then dissipate the entire sum, so there was no money left uh, at the end, oh. and I got the advance that no one else got, right? So there was, right, right. But my family, my siblings weren't so upset about it. They knew that was a potential to happen. Yeah. Okay. Um, but my 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 mom, in in order to. S- for whatever reason, we weren't around. No one was physically present with her. She ended up getting a second mortgage on the home in order to cover the loan to me, which was completely unnecessary because her money, she might have had some sort of tax hit or something like that right? for taking the money out of where it was uh-huh. uh, to give me the second But she had, she had the funds. Yeah, she had it easy when she gave it to me. But we learned towards the end that she had to take out a uh, – she not had to. was advised to take out a mortgage. Oh, dear. And so when we went to sell the house, we were like, what? What? We thought you owned the home. like Outright. Outright. Yeah. You've been in it forever. So and how much was the, the, how much the was home the was sold for four How much was the principal on that loan? Except it had been years. Yeah. So how much was the principal? I, I, I it wasn't know. 60 still, I right? Oh, okay. I mean, like it would have to be really. I know, but Jesus, I'm just that saying, was the years overall ago. point I mean, was I know was that been like fifteen years was ago was that she least. didn't net as much as we had hoped to when we were selling the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For her to live on, even she lived another two and a half years. Right, right, right. At that point, anyway, I didn't want to make this so show so sad. But that is, uh, yeah. But but it, it does point a picture, and I, I think the bigger there was sad way before. No, no, no. But there's a the bigger <laughs> point because my dad, you know, my dad passed in October. I'm sorry, in September. Um, the funeral was in October. Uh, my dad passed in September from the COVID, and while my mom and dad are were comfortable from a retirement standpoint, the and my mom is and, and it's now been what nine months now, and my mom is is still okay. But the lack of preparation for the moment when 
because it was very sudden. No one expected mm-hmm. my, my dad was a very healthy 75-year-old, 76-year-old man. Yeah, yeah 75. <laughs> okay, he was 75. Um, very healthy, except for the COVID. And so when it happened, it like happened very quickly. My dad was never one of those sickly people. And so at the time, they lived out of state. Their, you know, they still owned property. They had all of their stuff in an RV and all these things. And and my mom is undoing a lot of stuff. Now, my mom didn't get hit with many surprises, um, but just the going through all of that, the inventorying, the, and and then, then, then the decisions as to what you do with it. What do you do with this RV that you are not going to drive, right. Mom? Because it's, you know, it's a 40-foot RV. You're not driving it. You've never driven it. You're never going to drive it. Got to sell it. Whose name is it in? Dad's. Right. All these little things, you know. There was no trust set up. There was no trust. Um, And (laughs) South Carolina laws are very different than Florida law. So, I mean, not that I'm an estate lawyer, but at least I know Florida law enough to get in trouble. I couldn't touch an idea. I wouldn't even know where to start with South Carolina law. And it turns out there's weird things like in the state of Florida when a husband and a wife have a, are deeded to a, the marital home and a spouse goes, it's the right of survivorship. Mm-hmm. It's almost automatic. Mm-hmm. But in South Carolina, it's not. And in South Carolina, my mom has to literally put the proceeds of – okay, so she's considered half owner, not, not one of 100 percent, but 50-50. So when my mom sold the home, thank God they had some equity, a good chunk of equity, half of that equity had to go to the bank. All of the equity from the RV had to go in the bank. It's all sitting in the estate. And they don't have an administrative system – or they do have an administrative estate, which you're probably familiar with that a little bit. But without having to go – she's above the threshold, so she has to go through probate, and probate is automatically eight months long. Eight months and so all that money is tied up for the duration while well, the probate is, that is open. Because claims period. Potential, is... yeah, yeah. Okay. But apparently in South Carolina they're very strict. Like that day, you know, that, that last day, if there's no claims, boom. If anybody came in even 30 seconds later, so it's too late. So you're at the late. end of that. It already happened, that, right? No, 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 because the probate didn't get started Sorry. right away. Okay. So it's, it's actually a few months down the road. It's soon. It's okay. soon. But it's, it's patience and – Again, jumping through hoops that you're not expecting. And, you know, my mom had to relocate to Florida. She's bought a house here, and she's never bought a house before. My, she and my dad have, and yeah, my dad's always handled it. That was very yeah, nice. Yeah, and it, she, she's going to be very comfortable, and the location's very nice. It's perfect. But she's not going through any kind of depression or anything like that? No. no. Yeah. I mean, she's going through all of that. You know, everybody to deal no, with. But I mean, not a clinical one. She's sad. I imagine if you if I if I had her go talk to a therapist, they would diagnose her with something. But okay. <laughs> I mean, they were married fifty three yeah. years, so um, yeah, it was uh, it was a it was it was traumatic. And but but you know, I think some people go regress and they become they they refuse to make a decision. My mom is the exact opposite, which can't be healthy. She went and made all the decisions. She will make every decision. She can't stand for there to be an unmade decision. She will make it. And I give her credit because most people get, you know, you can you can talk yourself into in, indecision. But she talks herself into decision, which is sometimes a little bit too hasty. So you get the give and take in both of those situations. So anyway, I guess the, the moral of the story, and I think, is, is, is you got to get your affairs in order. And children should know what their parents' deal, deals are so that they can – be ready when, you know i when think about comes. this like i've never told my kids where to find my ins- life insurance policy right. i just you know i don't know what they would i somehow imagine if if it was sudden god forbid right yeah. uh that they would know to rifle through all my papers and they'll find everything right as any family i guess would they would have to then oh, where did dad keep all his shit and his paper they'd find it and make the right phone calls and get on top of him none of my kids are dumb no, but I never, I never, I've thought about it. Like maybe, maybe this weekend I'll sit down. Like this is where my papers are, and this is. Do you have a plot? I hate to make this weird. But getting so more. No, it's here. definitely stuff that needs to be talked. But about. That is, that's yeah. a Do you really have a plot? plot? So, uh, uh, no, I don't have a plot. 
Uh, Jill and I don't, and we actually had this. They conversation. can get expensive. It's like you should be they making can. payments on we, it. We should, <laughs> right? Uh, where I have a, my my personal situation is complicated, but I, and I won't go into the other air um, because where we want to be buried right now, we can't be buried because we're. It's not under buried. a high school or something. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's in the backyard. <laughs> Under the pool, it's in. It's yeah. right underneath the stage. So no, no, kids, we, we kids can prance on top of your corpse. Where where we are, um, individual parishes, the Catholic ch- parishes, have their own yeah. respective cemeteries. Yeah, and a long the parish that we've been longtime members of has a a nice local cemetery, which would be mm-hmm. perfect for us because our family, are, you know, our yeah. local families are here in that area. Except we're not currently members of that parish uh, because okay. of a dispute we have with the pastor. As we're waiting for him to get relocated so that we can come back to the parish. But if we were to as die, as you say that, if, we were to, if, if one of us were to die, why I'm no if, longer if, a Jew. If, if we were not, it, well, we could. I mean, we could be members of that parish. It's just we well, I, I, it, it, uh, it, it, we I, weren't. I had a dispute with not a rabbi. Mm-hmm. But with my synagogue, right? right. This is a, a, yeah, this yeah. is a this is a dispute with an individual pastor. This is no, not. Yeah, a, I know. I'm this isn't a, this isn't a faith issue. It's a no. But uh, you know, a, in, in Judaism, we have the same issue. thing. You go through <clears throat> your synagogue or your church mm-hmm. or your whatever, and they have a a, um, a portion of a cemetery that's yeah. devoted to that right. ca- congregation. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you know that's where my parents are. But I just I just just having a dispute with. What's do you, you can't say anything about it, right? Oh, sure, I'll tell you about it. So, um, back, oh God, it's been several years. I can't even remember how many years ago it was. Probably plus before five Before you tell, plus. before you say, is sure. it something you can easily get past if you? If oh yeah, yeah. It's a very it's it's a very personal issue with this one particular pastor. It's not a it's not the church. It's not the parish. Okay, it's just one particular person. So when my parish, when we belong to my parish. There were two specific masses. There was the regular um, English mass, which is what most Catholics go to, and then there was a a separate Latin mass, which is a very smaller proportion, but more traditional Catholics enjoy. And we didn't go to the Latin mass a lot, but we occasioned it. And when the priest that was running that Latin mass got moved, which is normal, he wasn't being punished, he got moved to a different parish, and the bishop said, this is going to be the Latin, this is going to be the home of the Latin Mass, and I'm giving you this entire parish, and it's going to be for you and your congregation, and everyone who does Latin can go here, and you will be their pastor. So it's a very interesting, very politically charged event, but um, with, with gives and takes. But it was a positive in the ultimate end because the parish has grown like by leaps and bounds. Okay, so we were very close with that pastor, But we weren't Latin mass goers. So we stayed at our parish, St. Anthony's, and we did not go with them. But we still had friends there. We frequented there. We uh, socialized with that priest and our friends who would go to the Latin mass and left the parish. And um, although we were continuing to stay at this parish, we wanted Roman's friends, my, my oldest friends, were at the or now at the new parish because his friends were going to be all going to through confirmation through the Latin rite. Mm-hmm. And we wanted him to go through the Latin rite as well just because all his friends were there. Not, no, no other reason. Well, the pastor at St. Anthony, the, the old parish, didn't like that at all. And when we asked him, he essentially invited us to leave the parish. He took it. Personally? He took it personally that we were going to have him confirmed at a different parish. Is, is this – now, I've been <coughs> to several of your um, christenings. Christenings. christenings, yeah. So is this the same one? No, the, no, no, no. You would never have met – Okay. You would never have met this particular guy. He's a really – he's very hostile to traditional Catholics in general. Okay. There's a, there is a hostility. It, just, like, just like people don't like Trump and tr- – Okay. And, and – very right-wing conservatives. There's a similar situation in the church. Um, the, but it was ridiculous. So we're like, he invited us to leave. So we left. How, how did? How does one tell you to do that? To your face. 
<laughs> yeah, the, said, it was this. But he, but no, he, he actually said didn't it in say terms it. He, of did, I he didn't say it. To leave? He, he didn't say it to our face. He actually said it through his secretary. Because I'm just kind of joking. He essentially said, if he if they're going to go there to get his their confirmation, they can take themselves and they can make that their permanent home. Wow, why why is someone in that position petty? It, it, how could you be a priest and be and so be, petty? Right. It, it's a it's question in, we ask right. all the time. It's why we can't go back there. Right. Because we'd be hypocrites to yeah. make him our pastor. Because as much as I enjoy his mass and I actually enjoy his homilies, he's actually a very thoughtful homilist, but he's so damn petty. It makes your skin crawl. Right. To think that you would say that to a parishioner who gives money and goes weekly and. Right. Is, a, is a participant? I mean, like, like we were. I was a lector. I'm a member of Saint uh, Knights of Columbus. Um, we were very. Yeah, and you're very, and you raised we your were, children to we, be active as well. You know, when right. we, when Jill created her, um, her, uh, her charity, Ohu or Watoto, mm-hmm. that was created through that parish. I mean, so we have our connections there. We, that's our home. So how parish. long ago did this happen? Years ago, gosh. Well, would have been thir- Roman would have been 13. He's now 19. So at oh, least six years wow. ago, at least. No, and, I went – okay, go yeah. ahead. So anyway, that pastor is still the parish. Okay, so when we left, we moved our membership to a different parish, and we can't – now we can't be buried at St. Anthony's Cemetery. Now, when we rejoin, and theoretically, we'll be go back in line and can probably join and do all of that, and we I think we will eventually. I mean, I mean, Joan, but I why has that. it been six years since you tried to go back? Because the pastor is still there. You're just waiting for him to what? Leave. <laughs> no, in the in the church, in the church, bishops generally reassign priests about every every seven oh. years. Oh, I didn't know this. Okay. Yeah, so so, so the clock very, is ticking. It's okay. very typical. Okay. Did you know that? Now, not all priests get. I not no all idea. priests don't always get moved, but they often get moved, and it's usually seven years stints, because they want they want to do one thing. They 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 want you to do. They want you to to get they ingrained don't want them, and do work. They don't want them but, around children too but, long. <laughs> I was going to say that, but uh, I, I knew you like, were thinking it. Funny. <laughs> you, you read my mind. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Seven years of – seven years of, of – seven-year Catholic of of pedo- Seven years of pedophilia. Statue of limitations or something? Is Jesus. that what that's called? <laughs> Y'all are terrible. That's terrible. That is terrible. Rotten. Anyway. All right. So well, when they rotate them out. What, are we schmucks so over here? If, <laughs> if, if and when they ever rotate them out, we'll go back to the church. Okay. We'll go back there. So no, if when, I die when tomorrow, I, I don't know where they're going to bury us. So we'll figure somewhere else. You know, long story I, short. I need to get long story short. <laughs> long story short, I'm not – yeah. Oh, wow. I, no, I was – I, I had, I had you just – You a very nice story. I had just gotten divorced, and uh, Dana – Dana. Yeah, Dana was – let's see. No, it was Rebecca. Uh, oh no! It was Dana had it. I was going to enter into 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 Hebrew school at like six years old, seven years old, okay. through the Hillel <clears throat> at, at Congregation Beth Am. I know where you're. Yeah, okay. and um, and I was a member there for for years. I was actually active in the men's club and the whole thing. So, um, but obviously the divorce took a lot out of me financially. So I, I go to the secretary. Who's mm. running the books? Yes, and they're very. And I them. said, "What's it going to cost to get my kid in?" I said, "Oh, you get a a discount if you make a voluntary donation of like twenty five hundred dollars to the." I said, "Well, that's not a discount. <laughs> like, I, I'll get less of a rate, but okay, I don't have any extra money." So, she said, "Oh, just pay the hello cost," and it was like very nice conversation. You don't need to make the. Obviously, you don't need to make a voluntary donation to the congregation. Thank you. I said, I don't want to be billed because previously when you would get a quarterly bill, the bottom perforated portion would be like fill it in if you want to donate extra beyond your dues. Mm -hmm. Sure. And it was always, you know, boxes were marked like but ridiculous sums of money, not like. $10, $20, $50. Ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars. It would be five hundred, a thousand, twenty five hundred, five thousand, that kind of thing. So I said, I don't want to have that. When you bill me, can you make sure you send out on a different piece of paper? I don't want to be getting this perforated portion. She goes like, Why? I goes because I just don't want it to be where oh, Richard didn't send that in. Right, uh, right. It's, there's something about tracking me. I just don't, you know, just 
just for a year, I need to rebuild my life, and I just want my daughter to go to Hebrew school. So, oh, that's fine. We'll make sure that doesn't happen. And then the bill comes, and it's there. And I think it's just an oversight because it's being printed, you know, among others. So I call them and I say, you know, I don't like being billed this way because it makes me feel but like... But you don't have to pay it. No. I just don't... Right. It's completely okay. voluntary. This, this is where just, the story makes okay. sense later. It, it does make sense? Later, okay, yes. I'm waiting for that <laughs> part. Okay, I'll good. tie it up. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Tie it all in because I'm like, just fucking throw the perforated <laughs> part away. <laughs> Crumple it up and put it no. in a circle file. That's what I would do. <laughs> no, well, because I had heard through the men's club and other sources... That they they will track, okay, those who got the bill and those who didn't send the perforated portion back. Oh, okay. So, all right. So I just didn't want to have that. I wanted to be billed separately from everybody else. Got it. Okay. Don't have me on that list. That was the purpose. All right. And they, they understood. So then the second quarter came. There it is. So I walk into the Hebrew school and I said, you know, I. I was hoping this would be fixed by now. We're sorry. We know we have it noted not to send you this bill among the others. Third time it happens. So I call the rabbi. And I, I said, listen, you know, I've been a member here a while. And, and I go into this really rough spot. And I don't want to be billed this way. I was promised I wasn't going to be billed among the others. Because, well... I appreciate you, Richard, but um, I've I've asked this treasurer to give you a call and work all this out. Okay. This treasurer calls me. Oh, dear. Um, Mr. Myers, we must see some voluntary contribution if you want to if you want to be if you want to be an active member of the men's club and like I go, wow, wow, yes. I know it says voluntary, but it's we uh, need you to volunteer. We need we need we need we need all these improvements. We're getting this addition and we need everybody to be in. We need this to be a community. Like I said, you couldn't just go a year without billing somebody after they went through a rough divorce. Yeah, you had a rough and, time. I, and I and and I said I'm done. I'm done with this. Like it was purely a business to them. Purely. 100%. And I understand you have to run it as a business. Any church or congregation does. There, there, is, there are financials. Yeah. So there are financials. you got employees. you got rent. you got, you know, uh, obviously landscaping, maintenance, maintenance all yeah. that stuff. So I get all that. AC, roof. Uh, right, right. The whole, the There's whole real shebang. things. I mean, there are right. real expenses. Yeah. Right. But for it to be like we're trying to develop a, this is what their argument was. We're trying to develop a sense of community. But in order to develop the sense of community, they're tracking everybody's donation probably not only who's contributing but of course by amount mm-hmm. so sure. you can imagine there's there's a treasurer and there's a group in the board meetings and all that and there's a discussion right mm. what are we going to do with this person who's not contributing like this other person is now, you know it's funny you know, you know, when it's you like, say that because i think a lot of people want to foist that on on real on organized religion in general and i'm sure there are i'm sure there are catholic parishes and and par- and and dioceses that do something very similar, and I don't, I can't speak for everything and always, but I was once on the parish board for this particular church, mm-hmm. the St. Anthony's, and I was on it for a while. And I will assure you or your listeners that that conversation never had about anybody individually. We never said, "Oh, that person doesn't do this," or "Oh, that person doesn't do that." Yeah, and maybe and I'm sure. I mean. I'm guessing that didn't happen either at these board meetings. Yeah. But it sure made me feel that yeah. way. Yeah. I and mean, it's like you don't – if I've made a special request to be built separately and they promise me that and then get a call from the treasurer, it's like we're still strongly encouraging you because we can't have people who are actively – like like in the on the um, um, the board, if you will, of the separate men's club, you know, mm-hmm. uh, when you're not helping, uh-huh. when you're not – contributing to the welfare of, the, of our community at large. And wow. da, 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 da. I'm like, I'm just asking for a break. Yeah, for you a know, little bit of time. A little bit of time, right? Right. So it, that's a real, you know, that's really, that, that's a management style that they blew. Right. I mean, yeah. when you, you go into a restaurant, you can see different managers right. F it all up. You know, that's, that management style is, is, 
it might get immediate results from those people they scare, but they're going to move other people away. And you get, I think you just get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Yeah. And that's kind of what that proves right there. You leave because you're mad. Yeah, and, and, and now I've never reason. been a member of another synagogue want, ever I mean, since. It just left be... me with such a bad taste in my mouth. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, and I, I'm not a religious person to begin with. I like the brotherhood of it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, not yep. the faith aspect of it. I like the, the sense of community. Like, I know what uh, you mean. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Did... Yeah, I haven't heard Serge say anything yet, though. What's up? What's on, Serge? Serge, you have a plot? No. I'm not. Just. You're not going to die? Melt me down. You know what I'm saying? You, you, do you think you want to go that way? You want to end up being. Uh, Some cremated? ashes? Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. No, actually, what I want to do, they, they can actually press your ashes up into a vinyl record. That'd be cool. Wow. Yeah. That'd be groovy. It would be. <laughs> but um, bum. That's really that I'm joke. The king of the bad pun. That, that joke was just dead. Just dead. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. I said the world's the oldest joke the other day, and it went over her head. I said, "Where do they? What part of town are all the cemeteries? In the dead center of town." That's, that's a dumb joke. That's a total dad joke. That is a dad joke. <laughs> what time is it? Is it? It's, it's not time yet. yet. Well, well I was going to ask Serge. He he had his, you know, since we yeah. haven't been here in a while. He, he, he had his first. Be, he wants to be a record. He had a premiere. Well, for, forget. Oh that. yeah, I did. he had his premiere uh, show. Oh. What's uh, yeah? I want to hear all about it. I performed at Pride in Ebor. That was cool. Shout out to Izzy. Definitely. I'm sorry I missed it. I was probably yeah, no, sick. It was, it was awesome. Stage is huge. Outside. When are you, going, like when are you performing again? Uh, probably in New York when I go visit Star at the end of the month. What was your... Are you coming? To New York? Yeah, come out there for the weekend. Well, I'm going to be what, out there Friday, Saturday. Do you have to get an extra ticket for what, your what, kidney stone? Which, or which is it weekend? just you? The last weekend of the month. Friday. I do want to make a trip up to New that York. That would be fun. I'm saying, hey, come with me. There's a lot. There's a lot of seats left on the plane. Just saying. Seats on a plane. I'm on okay. a Delta flight. Um, Flying into JFK. I have a trial. The week of the 28th. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Well, I'm not coming that weekend. Next but. time. Next time. Next time. But I want to hear, did you get any reviews? Did you get any feedback from other artists? Yeah, people were liking it. Well, I haven't really asked anybody about it. I didn't get any footage. Alfie didn't go. So, you know. Oh. It's only my first performance ever. Were you nervous? Only your first. Absolutely. Were you, were you, were you, absolutely. You kept it together, though? Yeah, it was good. I did, I did my job. I okay. did a good job. Didn't okay. mess up. Okay. Didn't stand there like, uh. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I might be performing when I'm out there. Actually. How long was your set? Uh, I did two songs. It was like five minutes. If that. Cool. He did a whole, I think his was 15 minutes, and in that 15 minutes, I had the hey, last Gino? five. You mean who? Who? Uh, who? The Izzy. Oh, Izzy. Yeah, yeah. Izzy is the singer, so I was on a couple of his songs. Okay. Yeah. Cool. He started off his whole set with proud to be an American. <laughs> Everybody was loving that. It was great. <laughs> it's fantastic. Beautiful. Oh, that's cool. I don't know who he is. Yeah, he's a singer. Performer. Do you know who he is? Do you know who he is? Izzy? Izzy Stars. My bud. Izzy, <laughs> my bud. <laughs> Hang out. All right, so we're here 55 minutes into the show, and I want to find a guilty, not guilty. All right, let's find it. You guys chat amongst yourselves. I did, we ever, did we ever finalize the fact facts or not fact? I mean, is uh, he's a... So, uh... I thought we were going to do aliens. Oh, we yes. were going to talk about aliens. Yes, what happened? But we got to get footage. We're stupid. Oh. We, we got to get a whole footage. show on death. <laughs> and now we can talk about aliens who were still going to kill us. Yeah, okay. no, we got to get me, footage. To me. This whole thing about the UFOs, and all, it's so freakishly silly because I believe in a principle called Occam's, Occam's Razor. razor. Yeah. What's uh, that? Have I so talked about this with no, you? No, I know what Occam's Razor is. Okay. What is yeah. it? Go ahead. Tell me. So it's tell, a principle. Tell our audience. Basically, <laughs> basically when you have uh, something that's unexplainable, there's usually a complicated way to explain it and a simple way to explain it. Okay. The simple way to explain it is usually almost always it's almost aliens. in it's according to Occam's principle it's always 
the right answer. Yeah. Okay. So either it's true extraterrestrial flights and, yep. you know, science and technology and entities, or it's like a military super hyper technological advance militarily by a foreign nation. That's true. Or ours. Or ours. Or ours. Or both. Or both. Okay. And so even people who are in the military, like Navy pilots and shit that see this stuff, they're not briefed on it. They have no clue. Right? Um, but if you're going to say, oh, it's ships, the spaceships that have flown light years to get here. Or it's from China. Interdimensional travel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It may not take that yeah. long because you just fold the universe into wormholes. Yeah, everybody thinks there's, a, there's wormholes and all that stuff. I think there's portals. Okay, so what, so I'm saying 100% certain it's terrestrial and not extraterrestrial. I agree. I got to disagree. Okay. I'm shocked. I disagree. So do you believe... It's far more likely to be extraterrestrial? Yeah. Why? Just because it's been documented throughout the pyramids and all that stuff. Like, all this ancient technology. It's everybody. It's been, I don't know, like I said, you got the the cave paintings where you see the spaceship on that. This is stuff that's older, 2,000, 3,000 years old. So they're all kind of telling the same story. Okay. You know what? Okay, may, maybe it's a phenomenon among all peoples and cultures to think that our existence was seeded from another. I've heard that. Right? Like, yeah. So it's just a belief system. Uh, Star Trek. Mm-hmm. That's, what's, that's, More, that's Star Trek. Right. Right. Yeah. Ish. Ish. No, that's the story of Star okay. Trek. That's, uh, there is a, they, they tie that up. But right. I think you know, I saw that episode. I, I, think your, <laughs> I think your consideration is, is realistic. Is, Legitimate. It's, there's nothing. I'm not going to say you're wrong. I don't agree. I think that if it was extraterrestrial, and for the same reasons you say, I believe it's. I believe it's us. I don't believe it's China. It's possibly China. I hope it's us. Um, I don't. I don't think it's China because I just don't think they have that advance. Mm-hmm. I think we wouldn't let it happen. Let me just put it that way. But hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me go back though. I don't I think it's. Hey guys, we just had a uh, uh, a power. We just had a power surge and a brownout, so we went out, we went dark for a few moments. But we are we are after our time period, so we're closing it down and saying closing goodbye. We'll time. see you next week. Thanks, yeah, guys. I'm Richard Myers of the Myers from PA, and Jason Ricardo with Ricardo and Waslick. We didn't do much of the whiskey rebellion. We didn't bring whiskey this time, but we'll yeah. resume that next we week. We'll have lots of whiskey next week, yes. and we'll hopefully have alien footage too. Okay, have a good cool. weekend, and we're going to finish up that alien conversation. If we Heart haven't. Out. If, if we haven't been transported out. This controversial and Cardi B is the role model for 12 year old girls. There's rappers pushing Xanax at the top of the billboard. But if I mention race in a song, I'm scared I'll get killed for it. It's backwards. It's getting exponentially dumb. It's more difficult to get a job than purchase a gun. Eminem used to gay bash and murder his mom. And